Joseph Fair, a virologist and epidemiologist who's worked on the front lines of the Ebola outbreak in Africa, believes facts may be our best defense against the coronavirus. There's so much misinformation out there, uh, and that's, it's breeding a lot of confusion. Let me ask you this. Is COVID-19, as you call it, is it in the air? If I take a deep breath, did I potentially take a deep breath of the virus? Especially not outside. You know, we're sitting in front of nature's greatest disinfectant, which is sunlight. The UV light inactivates the virus. So around all these people, I'm relatively safe. Absolutely. You need to come into direct contact with it, either by someone coughing or sneezing and those droplets landing on your face, your eyes, nose, or mouth, or you've touched a surface and then you, then you yourself touch your face, nose, eyes, or mouth. You're telling me that everything up here is the point of how the infection is, gets into my body. It's a natural instinct. Everybody touches their face, probably up to 50 to 100 times per day without even realizing that you're touching your face. It's going to happen. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get coronavirus. If you're sticking to that rigid hand washing protocol, if you're using you, you know, tissues and barriers, et cetera, you're going to be able to scratch your face, obviously, and not infect yourself every time you do so. And with that in mind, we set out to explore how to best protect ourselves from the virus. So public transit makes a lot of people nervous. I mean, yeah. this car is going to move. Usually there's not a seat. Usually in close proximity. And you're going to hold Again, on. I'll hold it with a tissue. If I don't have a tissue with me, I'll usually do a, an arm hold like this. You know, yeah. yeah, just to keep it, keep my skin from contacting it. But, you know, the, this idea of being six feet away from people, that's not going to happen on a, not gonna on a typical happen bus here. or train. Right. And that's why it's up to the individual. You know, you've got to cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze with your sleeve, ideally. We know just from studies from San Francisco's metro that a lot of antibacterial resistant pathogens, et cetera, last on these surfaces for a very long time. He doesn't recommend masks except for sick individuals or trained medical workers. And, you know, I have this desire to put on a mask right now because there's so many people around us. Yeah. The only way we recommend really mask, because there's only a specific type of mask that will protect you against the virus itself, and we should, should tend to reserve those for healthcare workers. Also, if you're not using it with goggles, it's not really going to protect you because you've only blocked two of the two of the three known routes of transmission. If you are sick and you're coughing, it is a good idea to maybe use a surgical mask yourself as a sick person. That way, when you do cough, if you're not covering, you've at least got a physical barrier between you and those droplets that would come out when you cough or sneeze. Next, we headed to the office. I think it's probably fair to say millions of Americans work in environments not unlike this, sitting you know six, seven feet apart. What should we be conscious of? Mostly your own personal hygiene and being careful when you sneeze, et cetera, on others. So obviously wiping down your desk and, and disinfecting your desk several times per day is a good idea to keep your own self healthy. But there is gonna be the occasional chance that you sneeze and that is gonna happen sneezing and coughing and during cold and flu season, very normal. So ideally you'll have tissue or some hand sanitizer next to you. You'll be able to reach quickly grab a tissue, you know, use it to cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze, immediately dispose of that tissue. Don't, don't put it on the desk. Don't put it on the desk. And then hopefully sanitize your hands or go wash your hands. It would be even better. And routinely disinfect your personal workspace, he says. Everything here would be what we call a fomite or a surface that can carry a, an infectious virus for up to nine days in the case of coronaviruses. So I sneeze, I wipe my, my nose, I pick up the phone, it's there. Yes. Absolutely, because this is really one of the filthiest areas, and I'm including that cell phone in that. That's truly really one of your dirtiest areas. So I wipe down everything, all the keys, etc. I'll take my phone, wipe it down. And the most powerful tool to fight coronavirus is soap. Every surface here is some of your, some of your more dirtier areas that you can find anywhere in the world. So everybody that's just used the restroom coming here, this would be an infectious surface, this would be an infectious surface, but this would be water. an infectious surface. But I need the soap. Absolutely. So our most powerful tool against fighting COVID-19 as well as any other infectious disease in general, get our soap. Ideally, you'll have hot and cold water, make it a little warm. And I usually try to emphasize that, you know, just a few seconds is not going to do the job. You don't need to do a surgeon's hand wash, but you need to do it pretty thoroughly. Is it, is it the water, the soap, the friction? What is what Soaps have job? a lot of detergents in them that automatically uh, inactivate what we call enveloped virus. COVID-19 is an enveloped virus. So that, uh, that both the friction, sliding it physically off, but also those detergents that break down the virus. Do a good hand rinse. Okay. Now, so usually I will take, if there's a sink like this, really? my elbows and okay. push it back. Feels a little awkward, but. Yeah. 
It is, and this is something you have to get used to. Yeah. Walk over, get your towels, wipe your hands. And then I usually take actually a second towel, which I recommend for everyone. And then this is what I use to open the door when I'm leaving the restroom. Another helpful tip, create a barrier between yourself and surfaces we commonly touch, like elevator buttons. Tissues are not always going to be with you or practical, so sometimes I, I always carry a pen myself. Pen. Touch it with the pen. And speaking of potential transmission points, Fair points out cash is not necessarily king when it comes to the coronavirus. Paper money is one of the filthiest objects that we touch in a day, just because literally millions of people have touched that before you have. And lastly, no more handshakes. Well, listen, a lot of great information. Appreciate it, and we'll, we'll leave it with a, an elbow bump. Sounds good.